Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. Okay, so if you guys remember correctly, last year I did a Fender Mod Shop custom order for an international buyer because Fender doesn't ship out of the United States with this program. And I kind of felt I let some people down with that because they were expecting this really weird, strange guitar and they just got a hardtail strat. I didn't actually do like a full review and demo, it was just unboxed. So I thought, you know, to make up for it, I would create my own crazy Fender Telecaster, like with the most ridiculous specs that the Mod Shop would allow. But in case you missed that or you don't understand what the Mod Shop is, it's a Fender like USA production where if they have it on any model at any given time, they will custom spec it out for you based on what you select in their little selector screen here. So it's not as expensive as say like the custom shop. It's not quite as high end. You normally pay like a, a $300 to $400 premium, but if you like weird goofy specs or you have something in mind that you've always wanted, it's kind of a cool option. Gibson does the made to measure program, but that's custom shop only. And most people don't have six and a half to $8,000 to do that with. I mean, these things the most, like the highest specced out thing, is like maybe 2,500 bucks. And that's, you know, very select models. But wait until you get a hold of this thing. It's got some freaky specs. Oh yes, I love it. I wasn't sure if I was gonna love it or not because this is what it looked like in like the stock photos. I went with the Antigua finish. Now, unfortunately we don't have like the Antigua pick guard, but you're gonna notice something that I've always wanted to try is on this Telecaster. Check that out. It's a channel bound neck. Now that's normally reserved for like really high end Fender guitars. Sometimes you'll find them in like the Acoustasonic range, like the really high end ones. But what they do is they take your maple neck and they route it out and then somehow they put a rosewood fretboard in there. This is my very first one that I've had. Now, unfortunately for you guys, if you've fallen in love with channel bound necks all of a sudden, they discontinued this feature from the mod shop. Honestly, it was only there for about three or four months. I had ordered this in early December and they told me it was going to be an extra wait because in late November, they're like, hey, if you want this in time for Christmas, you better order now. So it was like, a, I think a two and a half to three month wait, but they let me know that in advance. Usually you'll get these things within about a month, month and a half. But I'm digging this, like, I, I, I'm kind of a stickler for Antigua finishes. I love the originals. This looks pretty darn good to me. I just wish that we could have had the option for the Antigua pickguard, but you know, that mint green doesn't look half bad. For some reason, it reminds me of like the belly of a toad, like you doesn't want to pet it or something. I love that channel bound neck. Man, that looks fantastic, especially the fretboard they put in there. It's like all fiery. This is sweet. Now, as far as the pickups, I'll be honest, I don't remember <laughs> what I spec'd it as. Because, you know, it's been a couple of months here. I just knew it was an Antigua Telly with a channel bound neck. And I think I went with locking tuners. Yeah, locking tuners, 2020 serial number. Looks like everything arrived safely. No neck pocket cracks. Do I get any other special case candy? Guess we'll have to find out. Yeah, it looks like we do get a COA. I wish it said like mod shop on here or something. But is that what I think it is in here? <laughs> I love it. There's so many quirky features about this thing and uh, a partial covering. That, that works for me. I wasn't even knowing to expect that. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and throw this thing on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs because yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting. Inside my custom Telecaster, I found a few interesting things that we can talk about, but I ordered this one with Custom Shop 51 No Caster pickups. To be honest, at the time that I had purchased this guitar, I hadn't really done too many Telecaster guitars, so I didn't know which ones I would actually like, but I've always thought the name No Caster was kind of cool, and it's a vintage style pickup from the Custom Shop, what's not to like? So we just have the regular bridge pickup and the neck pickup as a Telecaster does, but I was a little bit surprised and let down that 
that I just kind of have a generic Telecaster body. So you can have your regular bridge here, but if you wanted to modify it later, you could have a humbucker in the neck and you could have a single coil in the middle. I would have rather have just had a basic body because, you know, it's a custom ordered guitar. I think I'm just going to leave it, you know, as I ordered it. So I think it would have been nice to at least have that option. But I'm sure all these mod shops ship with one of these simply because it's not a 100% custom instrument. You're just picking out of the specs that they currently have available to throw together. That's what's nice about Fender guitars. I mean, if you break your neck, just put a new one on. That also makes them highly customizable. That's why there's a big parts casters market at the same time. But in here, it just says Body American Pro Tele. So that's where that thing came from, directly off that line. And then we get a Mod Shop sticker to signify that this is not some sort of a custom run that'll confuse dealers in like 10 years when it shows up on the used market. But you will notice I marked this Trogly CO for custom order number one because, hey, if this video does well, I'm open to ordering, you know, more crazy things and taking your guys' ideas because I thought this was an enjoyable experience. I wish there was a little bit more of a customization factor to them, but, you know, we'll take what we can get here. But I'm really digging my choice of this mint green pick guard and the fact that it's three ply really sells it for me because I guess... I could take this and age it down so it would have like a little black area showing and it would look very similar to the painted Antigua pick guards. I remember I was going between this and one of those Perloid ones, but I'm definitely happy I took this route. As far as our bridge system, it looks like we're using three brass saddles. That's good. And I really like this whole bridge setup. You secure it with two screws right here and four down there. And it's a string through style Telecaster. And again, you get the sawn off bridge covered. It's kind of cool. As far as electronics go, I didn't do anything crazy here because they don't allow you to custom spec it out. It's just 250k pots. Nice electronics. I do notice that the body routes, they're a bit splintery, but not too terribly awful either. This is an alder body. I would have rather have done mahogany, but if you chose mahogany, then you were stuck with like two finishes. So I went with alder because then I could get Antigua. One of my favorite offerings of Fender. As far as pickup readings go, our bridge is about 6.5k ohms and our neck 6.96 so a little bit hotter and combined we get 3.41 so as far as qc goes on the body i did not really notice anything too crazy unless you count the you know slightly less than 100 percent perfectly polished cavity routes that really don't matter in the long run but now when we move on to the neck i do have a few qc things that we can talk about but first off oh man this thing looks even better after i conditioned it it's just got such beautifully fiery streaks in this rosewood fretboard. I couldn't have asked for a better example of theirs to put on here. I was not expecting that in the slightest, so I'm very happy with that. I would have loved the option to have lacquered the fretboard, but unfortunately that was not an option because look how this board looks like when it is lacquered over. I know we're kind of getting into Rickenbacker territory there, but that would have looked cool. We get 21, I think they're vintage tall frets. Honestly, I couldn't find those specs. Unfortunately, they didn't print it on my little sheet. Just as a pro tip, when you're specking these out online, if you hit show more details, that's when it tells you what type of radius it has. It lets you know what type of frets you have. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that when specking mine out. And according to my measurements, it looks like it's about a 12 inch radius. So that's what I normally like. So I'm glad I was able to get that. And what I really like about the whole channel bound neck is I've never liked the way Fender does binding on their guitars. It's coming from the Gibson standpoint. It just doesn't quite look as nice in my opinion because they always like bring it up here and then end it there. It's just not what I'm used to. But with the whole channel bound neck, you get that kind of more traditional binding look to it. But then the fretboards, you know, inlaid into the neck. It's just kind of something unique, something different to talk about. It makes it worth custom ordering and makes this a little bit special now that that feature is currently retired. But unfortunately, you can see right here, my fretboard got a little bit chipped. And that's kind of sad on a custom ordered guitar. <laughs> so a little bit let down there. And right along here, you can tell that the fretboard didn't quite completely close the gap. I don't think a string's going to catch into it, but if you get your nail along it, you can see there's just a, a very small area there, small one here, and then pretty much the rest of the neck, besides those three areas, 100% perfect. I would imagine I have some sort of a bone nut and a truss rod access at the top, which is what I prefer. As far as neck specs, we get a nut width of 1.7 inches, and by the 12th, it increases to 2.02. It's advertised as a modern C neck shape. I forgot to do this before putting the strings on. I would guess it's probably about 0.88 at the first fret, 0.95 by the 12th. 
And I love the look of the old style tuners, but at the end of the day, I'd rather have locking because it makes it a little bit easier to restring. Single string tree with the Fender Telecaster logo up here, made in USA. And this is all gloss. But it feels like I opted for satin finish on the back. The only thing that I think would have made this thing even better is that they would have let me spec it out as a flamed maple neck with a channel bound <laughs> fretboard. That would be awesome. I would love it. But then if you channel bound a flame neck, you're going to lose it on the fretboard if you're doing the skunk stripe version anyways. But I think that's the one thing that would really be cool because then you'd have flame maple binding essentially. Cool. Now that it's all strung back up, a few other things I noticed, maybe they could use a stronger control plate here, because if you try to lift up on this knob, the whole thing does come up. But moving on to the back side, nothing too crazy for a Telecaster, no cutaways, comfort cars or anything, you don't have the options for that. But you do get the custom mod shop plate on the back, which you could replace with a blank one if you really wanted to. Ooh, it looks like we even have micro tilt in there. But string through, output jack on the side, your regular style strap buttons, nothing too fancy. And it's not like bursted on the edges, it's just that kind of baby puke green color as some people call it. But I always think Old West cowboys, tumbleweed country scenes when I think Antigua. So people that just see baby poop green, um, uh, I think you're just thinking about it wrong personally. <laughs> but you know, to each his own. Now the back side of the neck, feels like a satin finish to me as I was talking about earlier but it's not like a really cheap feeling satin it's like a semi gloss almost because that's something else you don't really get to choose like your neck profile like if you want a channel bound neck you have to choose the modern C Telecaster neck shape and whatever finish that they choose to put on it but you do get to select your tuners and I did the deluxe locking and here's my serial number 20086523 all said and done, this thing weighs 7 pounds, 12.9 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. Okay, let's go ahead and run through these tones. So the no caster pickups, unfortunately, they're no longer available on this program either. So if you fall in love with what I'm demoing today, I'm, I'm sorry, you can't get it unless you buy it from me. That was not intentional. They just happened to discontinue this stuff. So starting with our neck pickup, you just heard it, but let's hear it in a little bit of a different style. like this neck pickup. Normally, Tele neck pickups, they're really dark sounding, but this one, it still has a little bit of a bright attack to it yet. But still being clear and bell-like, I guess you could say. Let's switch over to the bridge. but I don't think I'm as in love with it as I like the neck pickup on this one. I mean, this one, I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong, nice and spanky. But I've had better Telecaster pickups and just by a hair, but this neck pickup, I'm liking it. Now let's see how they sound like together.
I really like the middle combination of these two guys. But for me, anyways, I think this quintessential Telecaster tone really comes into that middle position. <laughs> Final thoughts on this neck pickup fantastic middle pickup pretty good but i think i want a little bit more bite out of my bridge pickup personally so now let's switch it over to distortion maybe i'll like the bridge pickup more now <laughs> It sounds pretty good distorted though. Try out the neck. But great for lead tones. We'll try for some middle pickup tones. I can't say I'm really inspired by that at all. So I think for distorted tones, it's all about the bridge. Unless you're doing some nice solo stuff on the neck. So what are my final thoughts on my own custom mod shop guitar? I mean, of course, I like the way it looks. I'm the one that designed it, right? Not everybody's going to agree with me, but all in all, we did find a few QC things on the neck, but it didn't necessarily completely ruin my experience with this thing. I will say, I'm impressed with my little pickup choice here, just kind of, you know, random guessing. That neck pickup, fantastic. I love it, I would highly suggest it. The bridge pickup, I think I'd prefer something just, just a hair hotter to get that really raunchy Telecaster sound. But there's nothing wrong with this as is. I kind of find that I do like this little sawn off bridge cover right here. It doesn't necessarily affect your palm muting and then you don't get all scratched up and everything. And it still looks, you know, kind of traditional without the whole cover on it. So I think this is a, a pretty solid, what, B minus, B plus job by Fender. Not 100% perfect, but a great little experimental piece from the Fender Mod Shop. Unfortunately, half of these features are discontinued now, but you can still get antique Watellis out of them if you are interested in ordering your own you under the Fender Mod Shop, it's on their website. Now, what is my final opinion of the channel bound neck? I really like it. I really hope that they bring it to the body as well. I know they kind of do that with the Acoustasonic series. They inlay that top right there. But I would like to see it brought to the electric guitar world. I mean, maybe they've already done it, but, but for some reason, you know, Fender's binding, I've never really liked it all that much. 
but this whole channel bound neck, I'm digging that. I think it's awesome. I would like to see Gibson even incorporate it maybe. It just looks so fancy and elegant and that's what I like in a guitar. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out my weird mod shop today, the Antique Watelli. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.